Good morning, everyone. Hello, hello. Um, go ahead and tell me that you're here in the chat. Tell me how you're doing this morning. I'm going to grab the link and go put it in all the places. Hopefully you all are having an awesome Friday. Good morning, Jacqueline. Hey, Gunica. Um, looks like I'm going to need to plug in my computer or else we're not going to make it through this stream. Hey, Marissa. Oh, I'm glad to hear you're doing good. Good morning, Mrs. Garcia. Um, I'm actually having a great day so far. I'm ready to, to get the day started. Um, I have a couple of projects and things that I need to wrap up today. Need to get some grading done. But A little bit more energized um, than I maybe have the past few days. I sort of just gave into um, that I'm gonna sleep in a little bit more and turned off my earlier alarms and I think that that helped so that the last hour of my sleep was not interrupted so much. All right. I'm gonna plug in my, my computer real quick so i have to like crawl under my desk um talk amongst yourselves or whatever hold on Ugh. these are the types of things that you probably should do before you start uh, a live youtube video but i didn't so here we are i thought I had enough to make it. Um, and sometimes when my computer's plugged in, uh, it makes a really loud fan noise, which is now about to start. And I can never tell if you all will be able to hear it or not, so I just don't leave it plugged in, so it just doesn't make the noise at all. But that's not gonna work today, so it's all right. All righty. Morning, Mom. Hey, Valerie. Hey, Cindy. Um, okay. Just got to finish putting the link in all the places. How is everyone's Friday going so far? We have anything big today? I know we started talking yesterday about all of the um, like assessments that were due this week. I don't remember if we said that they were all due yesterday or if some of them were due today. I'm curious about what we're working on. I know my, one of my big tasks for today is finishing up, um, finish like revising the, those of you who know juniors who are going to be taking AP Lit next, next year, they're in for a treat. Thank you, Dada. That's one of my big tasks for today is making sure that that gets done and ready to go so that everyone who's going to complete the homework has plenty of time to do so. Ooh, chemistry project due today. Cool. Ms. Garcia, you're ahead? You have nothing to work on? I will share with you, if you would like, because I have plenty. Mom, the band concert was awesome. Um, going to go you have chemistry today as well. Yeah, we saw, I saw Valerie in the concert, um, I saw Naila, um, 
I saw a bunch of students who I've had in past years and this year. It was great. They did a good job. I was really impressed at how smooth the whole concert went. Um, I have a feeling that part of that is due to the fact that it was the fourth um, recital this week, but um, I thought it was really good. It was cool. There, there are clearly um, some people who have other musicians in their house. So they were, they were like performing with a sibling or a parent who also um, is musical, which I thought was really fun to see them sort of work um, in their families. And I think my, my favorite location, one student um, did his performance in a bathroom, I assume for the acoustics, um, but, but it was sort of funny to see like a never ending mirror situation going on. And it was good. Generally, I'm just impressed um, with the whole situation that our, our band director got this news that we essentially were not gonna finish the, the school year altogether. And he found a way to, to put together um, a showcase for students to show off all of their amazing, amazing hard work and talent. Um, that was great. I was really glad that I could go. All right, so I think I'm gonna go ahead and do the poem for today. Um, so this one is called At Home From Church by Sarah Orne Jewett. Um, and mom, I actually think that it's one that you will really like. Um, yeah, so mom, it was all online. It was on Google Meet. So each student performed like their own piece, uh, mostly by themselves um, on just their own single instrument. Some people had like a track to play along with. Um, and some people had uh, like family members at home playing with them. But most people like Valerie uh, performed solo which was fun. It was cool to see some of those instruments alone. Yeah. Um, so this is at home from church. The lilacs lift in generous bloom. Their plumes of dear old fashioned flowers, their fragrance fills where left alone I count the hours. High in the apple trees, the bees are humming, busy in the sun. An idle robin cries for rain, but once or twice and then is done. The Sunday morning quiet holds in heavy slumber all the street, while from the church just out of sight, behind the elms comes slow and sweet. The organs drone, the voices faint that sing the quaint long meter hymn. I somehow feel as if shut out from some mysterious temple dim. And beautiful with blue and red and golden lights from windows high, where angels in the shadows stand and earth seems very near the sky. The daydream fades, and so I try again to catch the tune that brings no thought of temple nor of priest, but only of a voice that sings. So there you go. That was at home from church. Um, and Sarah Orne. So I thought that one was fun. I like the the contrast, the juxtaposition between sort of settings and um, the the nature imagery. But again, as we were talking about um, these concerts, um, I think it's fun to to hear a little bit about music. So there you go. Um, okay, I think we'll go on to the book talk for today. Um, and I was just looking it up. I think somebody is reading this one. 
either right now or they just finished, but goodness knows, I'm never gonna remember who it was. So, I guess I shouldn't pretend. Hold on. Um, all right, got it. So the book that we're gonna talk about today is called The Time Traveler's Wife by uh, Audrey Niffenegger. Um, and so this was a, a novel that came out, uh, I don't know, several years ago. And it was really popular. They made a movie out of it. Um, and it's a really interesting So the idea that it, it's about a marriage between um, Claire and Henry. And Claire experiences life the same way that all of us do. Um, she experiences time the way that all of us do. Henry, however, does not. He um, has what they would call chrono displacement disorder and experiences time not chronologically, right? He sort of has these moments where he goes back and forth in time. Um, so though he ages, he can jump into other people's timelines. So for example, when he first meets Claire, she is six and he is 36. And yet when they get married, he is 31 and she is 23. So there's this weird mix um, and, and it's a story of their marriage. And it sounds incredibly science fiction-y or fantasy. And yet the genre is more just like contemporary. Um, it's almost like magical realism. We're just supposed to accept that this is what's happening and it's within this sort of normal world. Um, so yeah, it, it deals with the challenges that this causes in their relationship. Um, that he sort of just like disappears. He has this time travel and they're just trying to live this normal life and have this normal marriage. Um, and it's a really interesting premise for a book. So I'll read you a little bit of the prologue. Um, so Claire, it's hard being left behind. I wait for Henry, not knowing where he is, wondering if he's okay. It's hard to be the one who stays. I keep myself busy. Time goes faster that way. I go to sleep alone and wake up alone. I take walks. I work until I'm tired. I watch the wind play with trash that's been under the snow all winter. Everything seems simple until you think about it. Why is love intensified by absence? Long ago, men went to sea and women waited for them, standing on the edge of the water, scanning the horizon for the tiny ship. Now I wait for Henry. He vanishes unwillingly, without warning. I wait for him. Each moment that I wait feels like a year, <clears throat> an eternity. Each moment is as slow and transparent as glass. Through each moment, I can see infinite moments lined up waiting. Why has he gone where I cannot follow? Henry, how does it feel? How does it feel? Sometimes it feels as though your attention has wandered for just an instant. Then with a start, you realize that the book you are holding, the red plaid cotton shirt with white buttons, the favorite black jeans and the maroon socks with an almost hole in one heel, the living room, the about to whistle tea kettle in the kitchen, all of these have vanished. You are standing, naked as a jaybird, up to your ankles in ice water, in a ditch along an unidentified rural route. You wait a minute to see if maybe you will just snap right back to your book, your apartment, etc. After about five minutes of swearing and shivering and hoping to hell you can just disappear, 
you start walking in any direction, which will eventually yield a farmhouse, where you have the option of stealing or explaining. Stealing will sometimes land you in jail, but explaining is more tedious and time-consuming and involves lying anyway, and also sometimes results in being hauled off to jail. Sometimes you feel as though you've stood up too quickly, even if you're lying in bed half asleep. You hear blood rushing in your head, feel, feel uh, vertigo falling sensations. <clears throat> your hands and feet are tingling, and then you aren't there at all. You've mislocated yourself again. It only takes an instant. You have just enough time to try to hold on, to flail around, possibly damaging yourself or valuable possessions. And then you are skidding across the forest green carpeted hallway of the Motel 6 in Athens, Ohio at 4.16 p.m. Nope, 4.16 a.m. Monday, August 6, 1981. And you hit your head on someone's door, causing this person, a Miss Tina Shulman from Philadelphia, to open the door and start screaming because there's a naked carpet burned man passed out at her feet. You wake up in the county hospital concussed with a policeman sitting outside your door listening to the Phillies game on a crackly transistor radio. Mercifully, you lapse into unconsciousness and wake up, hour, uh, wake up again hours later in your own bed with your wife leaning over you looking very worried. Sometimes you feel euphoric. Everything is sublime and has an aura, and suddenly you are intensely nauseated, and then you are gone. You are throwing up on some suburban geraniums, or your father's tennis shoes, or your very own bathroom floor three days ago, or a wooden sidewalk in Oak Park, Illinois, circa 1903, or a tennis court on a fine autumn day in the 1950s, or your own naked feet in a wide variety of places and times. How does it feel? It feels exactly like one of those dreams in which you suddenly realize that you have to take a test you haven't studied for and you aren't wearing any clothes and you've left your wallet at home. When I'm out there in time, I am inverted, changed into a desperate version of myself. I become a thief, a vagrant, an animal who runs and hides. I startle old women and amaze children. I am a trick, an illusion of the highest order. So incredible, incredible that I'm actually true. So I'm going to stop there. This is, um, it's funny. I haven't read this book in a long time and I'm reminded of how really interesting the writing is, how um, really well written the book is. Um, so I totally recommend this book. Uh, it's a, it's a really interesting premise. I think if you like science fiction or fantasy or even dystopian books um, and have sort of been settled in that YA young adult uh, realm. This might be a really nice step into a, a slightly more adult or a more complicated book. It's just a really, a really solid book, a really good story. Not a good movie. Don't watch the movie. But a really good book. Yeah. Cool, cool. Well, what else do we got going on today? What questions do you have for me? What do you need my opinion on? Um... Anyone have any big uh, weekend plans? Curious. I know we'll get to hear about it on Monday, but I'm curious if anyone has anything big or exciting planned. I know my plans are minimal. We gotta... You're doing a socially distant picnic for Mother's Day. That sounds really cool, Miss Garcia. My mom has not told me what socially distant activity we're gonna be doing for Mother's Day. But I'm sure we'll do something. Um, I also need to do some errands and some chores this weekend. Definitely gonna to have to keep working on some grading of those finals. Such is life, such as finals. Um, 
So yeah, I think it'll be good. Oh, Marissa, you're gonna bake a cake with your mom to celebrate Mother's Day. That's fun. That's awesome. Yeah, my mom and I sort of brainstormed a couple of things that we could do, but I don't know if we decided. I know we're going to be having a video call Mother's Day. My mom's in, in Arizona. Um, so, yeah, that de definitely couldn't do anything, even if we wanted to, um, which we do, but we can't. I definitely have to do some work on my roses this weekend. Uh, a week or two ago, like all of my roses bloomed all at the exact same time and it was beautiful for a couple of days. And then the sun and the wind sort of destroyed them and they look awful now. So I need to prune them so that more pretty flowers can grow. That's sort of all I got going on, which is, is nice. There's there's something nice about the the slower pace of all this quarantine business. All right. So I think we will wrap it up for today. Um, I hope you all have an awesome Friday. I hope to see you later today. Um, in class. Or if not, then I'll see you back here again on Monday. All right. Um, have a great rest of your day, everyone. Make good choices over the weekend. Um, and I will see you on Monday. Always remember who you are, what you represent, and to show your Mustang pride. Bye, guys.